the Night Timber X. Oh, it's an amazing plane. It is the, it's the airplane that when you're out flying and the sun is setting and you put one more battery pack in and halfway through that flight you're wishing you didn't put the battery pack in. You just can't see your plane like you want to. When you have a plane that's all lit up, game changer. One thing you can't see with the receiver that comes with the airplane is your altitude. So let's install a uh, altimeter and now we can see the altitude. Only takes a second. It's a neat little uh, telemetry device. Let me show you how you do this, what it looks like, and the difference on the uh, transmitter screen. Batteries in storage mode. Hang tight, guys. It's amazing how cold that little tiny refrigerator keeps things. Let's see how cold it uh, really gets in there. 42, 41 degrees. Not bad. You know, I don't take enough stuff with me when I go flying, so I might as well take something else with me. I'm thinking about taking that little refrigerator on hot days to keep the LiPo batteries cool. I normally take a, uh, you know, a small ice chest or a, a lunch box with a frozen pack in uh, inside of it, and I keep the batteries in there, and the batteries last a whole lot longer when it's, you know, 90 plus degrees outside when they're a little cooler. That little tiny Mountain Dew fridge, you can plug it in a wall. Or you can plug it into a, you know, a car or cigarette lighter or something. Where I fly, we happen to have electricity. You know, I always take my power strip and an extension cord and one more thing to take with me. That little that little fridge works pretty dang cool. All right, so we're still bound up to the Night Timber X. Let's go to the telemetry before we add anything to it, and we'll just do auto config. Now we're going to see exactly what telemetry data the Night Timber X is going to send to the transmitter. On the main screen, we'll roll the scroll wheel over. Got the flight log, receiver, minimum and maximum voltages, electronic speed control, minimum and maximum voltage, temperature, RPM, all kinds of information, the ESC status. The AS3X settings. We got the gain settings and so on. And then we have all the all the safe select information. That's really cool too. We got the safe select gain settings and the angle limits right there in your telemetry screen. And then the gyroscope. We can come, we can see all the all the gyro activity. I don't understand that quite yet, but I want to. That's one of the things to put on the list. Uh, understand g forces i like to learn that too and then the avian prog which is programming your avian smart speed control directly from your transmitter so that's everything that is in our telemetry we'll call it the you know pack of the data the stuff that we can see we never saw Altitude, did we? With the Spectrum AR637TA receiver, altitude does not come in that receiver. A 637T altitude does come. The TA is the receivers that come with the bind and fly airplanes. The 637T is one that you can buy directly from Spectrum that does not come in a bind and fly and it has the altitude so let's uh let's make it have altitude here is a spectrum aircraft telemetry altimeter part number spma 9575 little telemetry device a little telemetry cable and the instructions and it plugs directly into the ar637ta receiver 
So let's uh let's pop this guy open here. We've got our altimeter, and then we have our telemetry lead and the instructions. And it says, uh, hook up information. Pretty uh, straightforward, huh? All kinds of goodies right here. Many different uh, languages. So you can brush up on your, uh, on your language learning. We need to access the receiver. So I'll need to take off the wings, and then we'll uh, plug this guy up. I'm gonna breathe. So I'm gonna glance through the uh, through the instructions real quick to see if there's a certain way that this needs to be mounted. You know, is it like the receiver has to have a certain orientation? Or not in the directions, it didn't say anything about. Uh, it need to be mounted any certain way, so we just need to access the receiver. All right, so we got the receiver available to see, and you can see there's three white plugs facing us. The one on the far right, the biggest out of those, is for another remote receiver, the SRXL type receivers. The smaller pin on the left on the top, that's for temperature or voltage. And the one right below it is the X bus. And that's where you plug in telemetry items. You can see that it says X bus one and X bus two. That's where we're gonna plug in our cable here. So we take our X bus extension that came with and we're gonna plug it into the X bus number one port on the altimeter. And this is so that you can daisy chain more telemetry uh, you know, components because there's only one telemetry plug in the receiver. So we can go from the receiver to the altimeter. Then we can plug another lead into this and then go into another telemetry device and so on. You can just, you can daisy chain as many as you want. And I'm hoping I can get this guy started. All right, got it all plugged in. I'm not gonna mount it um, exactly this second. We're just gonna make sure that it's all working like it's supposed to. Let's uh, power up our Night Timber X again, and then we'll look at the telemetry and see this new altimeter in action. Let's take a look at the transmitter here. Get you guys, oh, you okay? Are you guys okay in there? Let's go to telemetry, auto config, yes sir. And we ought to see a new list to the lineup here. Yes, we do. Number two, altitude. Double click a roll or whoa, double click a reel. Yeah, that'd be good. Display active. Okay. Altitude minimum zero feet, maximum 400. Status reports, inactive, inactive. So that means it's not gonna say things to us. Like when I'm flying, it'll say my voltage every 30 seconds. You can, you know, program it to say that. Maybe with the altimeter, it has Vario too. I'm not very sure about this particular device. Let's see if we can find Vario and add it, add it to it. 
There's Vario. Active. We'll see if it happens to show that up too. So then back out and back out on the main screen here. Let's roll our wheel. Okay, we got our flat log and then we got the ooh, altitude, minimum, and maximums. So you guys look at the screen and I'm gonna pick the plane up and down. Let's see what happens. Picking up the airplane. Oh, the tail is almost touching the ceiling right now. And I'm going to set it back down on the table. So our minimum was a negative 0.3 of a foot and our maximum was 5.5. .5. Sounds about right from my table to the uh, ceiling is probably about that high. Let's see here. Let's see. Let me get these lights out of your face. Get these lights out of your old face. I got a tape measure here. I got a tape measure. There's the plane hanging up. So let's see here. So I'm going to hold the tape measure right at the, at the table here. We're going to push the tape measure up. Hopefully it'll stay erect. That's probably as high as I got the. Uh, no, the fuselage probably around there. So, about four feet or so is what it said on the on the tape measure. So, I'm sure if we I'm sure if we bound the airplane on the ground, and then then we could probably see if it's accurate. But I tell you what, that's close enough for government work, right? So we want to see if Vario was in here as well. Flight log. There's the altitude minimum maximum, receiver minimum and maximum, electronic speed control information, ESC status. Well, that was, okay, that's electronic speed control minimum and maximum. There's the ESC status. There's our, there's a, another telemetry screen. I wonder how we can clear that out to set it. Okay, I just pressed clear. And that uh, zeroed out. Now remember, I didn't mount it in there. It's just kind of flopping around. So if it was double-sided tape to something, it'd probably get more of a, uh, you know, more of a uh, stable reading. All right, I'm going to pick it up again. You guys watch the screen. I'd say the fuselage is a good foot from the ceiling. It's three feet up from the, from the workbench. So you guys got to see it move. I didn't. We'll go back over here to the minimum and maximums. And it's still saying 5.5. .5. If I hit okay, I just hit clear. Remember it's not stable there. So let's go back to our where is that? There's our altitude. Pick it back up again. That's up two or three feet from the table. And then we'll go back to our minimum and maximums. Yeah, three foot. That sounds fairly accurate. Pretty cool, guys. Pretty cool. Just another little knickknack, you know. Just another little knickknack. Having fun with the with the hobby. All right, guys. Hey, thank you. That's all I got for this one. That was my latest uh, eBay purchase. Less than less than ten bucks, and uh, gave us a little bit of fun. I'll mount it solid, and then the next time we take the Night Timber X out flying, we'll uh, we'll have some uh, altitude data to report back to you. So. You know what? It's not saying the height. Let's let's have it do that real quick, so we can hear that. That's reports. Altitude three feet. 
15 Altitude, seconds. Four feet, 15.2 volts, zero amps, 81 Fahrenheit. If you want to win a jet like this, all you have to do is subscribe. Click the like button and leave a comment. And then uh, ring the bell so you don't miss my next video. At a thousand subscribers, we gave this jet away. At five thousand, we're going to give another one. I don't know what it is yet. We'll see when that time comes. So hey, subscribe guys. Happy flying.